equip them, but once I change to my primary, I can equip this. Okay, hello guys and welcome back. It's time to do attachments and I'm going to do it in the most lazy way possible, which means that I'm not going to do a uh, inventory widget or anything like that. I was I was thinking about it, but I'm, I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to use uh, iron belly attachments that we already have functional as an actors and then I will update them to become uh, inventory items and they will attach automatically to the weapon that we have currently selected. And when you find a new attachment, the previous one will be dropped. So yeah, what we want to do is we want to get more of those boxes first. Let's take this guy here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Three and six. Okay. And we will have, come on, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so we got those attachments. Uh, if I press G, I can see them, like this is the game view. So let's maybe go through all of them. So this guy. Let's just drop them. Okay, so we got those guys and uh, each of them is a accessory attachment, I guess. BP site attachment. Okay, so let's open site attachment. So uh, all the logic is being done here in the site attachment actor. Okay, so it's like stuff. I don't really care how it works. Doesn't really matter for me. What matters is that I want this attachment thingy to become um, an item. So I will just add item and I will call it attachment simulate when dropped. Yes, sure. Why not? uh except oh, that's not going to be that easy because we have a default scene root and then this is added in zero 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 which means that it should be able to be the root i mean i guess if i break it it's an easy fix so let's just do that I don't think anything really changed, but now it can simulate physics when dropped. <clears throat> Unless it has no collision preset, which is not good. We want to have some collision mm, custom. We want to save physics and query because we need to be able to query uh, them by picking them up. I want to save visibility, definitely block, camera definitely ignore and the rest it will be block block pound ignore physics body uh, ignore vehicle ignore destructible ignore so only word static and dynamic will be blocked by it um, so they shouldn't affect our movement at all besides on pickup we can disable physics so that also shouldn't be a problem okay so we got this and now we got hr item component so let's go here and let's say on pickup we got this inventory right reference so what we want to do is get owner of this component which is the picking up actor which is our character okay so from this guy we want to get equipment because this is what we need we must check if it's valid just in case this is like a good practice to always do valid checks and now if uh, your equipment is valid, we want to get item in slot, weapon. And only if weapon is, uh, only if weapon is 
valid oh actually we should be able to pick up this item only if weapon is valid but this is something that we'll have to do on the player side and uh, check if we have a weapon uh, selected which we will do in a second so uh, if there is a weapon valid we want to attach to actor mm. Okay, so the target attachment is self and the parent actor is this weapon and the attachment point, now the attachment point is the tricky one because uh, do we have attachment point anywhere here? Their textures do stuff I don't really see it but it will definitely snap snap and keep world and wield yes so this should be a variable and it will be attachment point um, in this case to be exposed on spawn and it has to be instance editable. We want it to be able to change it at runtime. Uh, so each attachment could attach to a different point, I guess. Uh, let's see how it works. So, okay, it's this. Now we have to go into our player. So our FPS player, when he is picking up items. So when we are doing the try pickup, which is here. And we do eventually interact with item on the client. Okay, and where is this? Okay, it's here. So on default, we go here and we just pick up item. Well, not really. We're going to make a new tag. And it's in, I think, here. Yeah, example tags. I keep it here. So we need new tag which will be definitely item this is utility and scope okay let's just do it like this we can of course do dot and very precise item but all i want to do is to make sure that it's just this so we go back here we go here and we say that it's a scope okay definitely not stackable and yeah okay so now that we know it's a scope we can go here and we can say if it's a scope i want to do something different so if it is scope <laughs> we're doing exactly the same thing mm. so we do a check we get our equipment and we get item in slot weapon mm. okay and if it succeeds then we do this pickup because if, if uh, we have a weapon da, 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 pick up item it's obviously uh, item of this item in range okay so yeah it's this one we can move this like here and this move like here this now move here or even here okay so if we want to add more types of items we can always do that and oh yeah and return node however when execution finishes it always runs the return node automatically but it's good to remember about it because sometimes we have variables in it 
so it's good to always add it to any execution that might uh, end up anywhere so yeah, it's this 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 then it goes here and yeah okay so if it is a scope then do this okay so we make sure that there is an item and we can now refer to this item we can just snap to uh, wherever it should snap so let's check how what's the naming convention for those uh, sockets so we go into iron belly we go into meshes uh, props weapons okay so let's start with AK mm -hmm. okay so there's a site closer site attachment point and iron site which is uh, okay so site attachment point this is probably a safe bet for all of them but if they need to be changed we'll change them per item specifically uh, okay save it and also now once we pick up a site and we need to check if a weapon also already had a site so get attached actors mm, get uh, maybe filter array let's filter the array uh, oh, let's just do a sequence here it will be faster so we're getting attached actors we're filtering the array by class uh site attachment so only attachments that are sites no lasers or f flashlights or something like that um actually uh, class oh, wait self get class oh yeah i can do it like this so this filters itself oh but this will be running in child as well so no let's not do that let's actually make it bp site attachment okay so now that we filtered we know that there should be only one so we get a copy reference to it and we say uh get item component and we say drop of course if this is valid if it is not valid then there is no item component and an item component we check if it's valid and if it is valid then we drop the item okay mm. Uh, drop current attachment and then I mean this condition goes first and then that's new attachment okay this should work in theory and I think that's everything we need to do for now. Let's let's test my theory. I have no freaking idea if this works properly. So yeah, we're not even changing any values inside of those scopes. They're all named scope. You know what? Let's let's maybe do that. Let's not be that lazy. Let's just go into blueprints, attachments, and let's just open those six. And we just go here your item and let's call it sniper scope let's go here and let's call it uh, EO tech 2x because this is with magnification and here we go here and we say L tech okay 
save everything really and then we have this one compact big and compact Okay, close them up and let's test it. So if I go now and try to pick up one of those items, I will not pick them up. But if I got, let's say this AK, and I go here, item picked up. So did it attach? Let's see something, didn't quite, Oh, there is. It is there. Uh, where is it? Details. Okay, I get it, but it's invisible. And also, yeah. So we need to make it visible. So let's go here, and before we attach, uh, we need to do a few things. So. <laughs> Mm, actor hidden in game no um, it doesn't have to have collision so this is fine all we have to do is just make it visible and can we actually run uh, hide on height no we can't okay it's an internal but that works that, that works fine let's test it again Okay. Okay, and I have it. It's of course not um, like where we would want it to be, and also there should be like a rail that uh, should become visible on the AK, especially because it doesn't have normally a rail for attachments. But in general it works, I can pick up another one. And now I think I got two or this one got dropped. Yeah, this one got dropped properly. And I can swap it again. And I can swap it again. I can pick this one. And it's actually not working because of some reasons, let's see. Okay, so this is just making, okay, let's, let's do something about that. So, oh, okay, so those are the Reese adapters. One, two. Uh, okay, show Reese adapter. Well, then, depending on the weapon, we could show adapters and do stuff. That's not really a problem. Enable, disable lens reflection, activate back render, forward render. What? Which one should I use? Uh, Okay, let's activate both. I have no idea what they're doing. Let's pick up a different weapon and pick up. Okay, this one doesn't have uh, the attachment point that we would think it have. So attachment point can't come from the attachment. It should come from the weapon. Okay, uh, that's an easy fix. Let's go back to our main folder. Let's go to our weapon interface, add a function, get attachment points. And we just do two outputs that are names. And this will be the site 
and close. Okay. And each of our weapons have one of those. So we have to open all of our weapons. One, two, three, four, five of those. Oh, you know what? Let's open template. Let's go into interface, get attachment point and just make it a variable. And this one is side and this one is close and it's fine. We don't have to do anything else with it. Uh, save it, close it, and now it is parameters. So let's open all five of our weapons. And yes, of course. Okay, so shotgun, we go into skeletal mesh, we find it, we open, and there should be... Uh, okay, so there's a sight attachment point in the shotgun. So it, it goes here. And there is a side close attachment point. Uh, and this one goes here. So we got the shotgun done. And then... Okay. Now MP7. We do the same thing. We find the mesh, the skeleton. And we see the those have different names because for some reason okay so this is site attachment point okay and this is the site and and this is the close attachment point okay so we should probably delete the iron site from here or make it invisible if it has attached actors so we can do that as well in a moment but uh, let's just skip it for now and then we have the hand cannon uh, let's go here hmm okay this one doesn't have any attachment points so I guess we should make those I mean there's iron sight here okay so let's make uh, a new socket which we'll call uh, oh I'm not writing great close attachment point okay and close attachment point will go on the axis just up and a little bit forward and we make another one and we'll call it side attachment point and this one will go up and we'll go forward like here okay so we got those two okay there goes the hand cannon let's open the Glock let's hope that it has some attachment points uh, but it might not really have those. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Mm. So let's maybe... like this yeah let's just add once as well okay just add socket or you know what let's not use attachments on this weapon it doesn't even have a rail doesn't really matter much uh, so yeah this one uh, this is the close 
and this is the site and we probably inside our um, uh, if we go here into our weapon interface we should also say um, um, uses attachments and there should be two values one says use and it's a bool value and the second says uh, extender or something like that and this is an integer uh, okay and this should go inside all of our weapons so we have to reopen it again oh. uh, so let's do this let's go here uh, actually it's not use attachments it's use sites uh, um, site extender ID okay and now all our weapons have it So Glock, no, hand cannon, well now yes, uh, MP7, definitely yes, shotgun, definitely yes, and doesn't require anything, and BP says yes, and requires, let's say extender zero, we'll see how it looks like. Okay. So this one uses extender zero. So we go back to our site attachments and we have uh, this here show this adapter. So from our weapon that we have here, we say use attachments. So we only go forward if it actually uses attachments. That's the first step. And second step is the extender, which goes uh, here. So, so Reese adapter. Okay. Um, okay, so let's do it like this. It's not equal minus one. then we go here and if it is then we just skip it so what we just did uh, and by the way we're going to test which those two do mm. okay so in our default weapon will say that our site extender is minus one by default so it's invalid and only the AK actually has it modified to zero and everything else has minus one this way only the AK will have it okay we got this now uh, and now also from the weapon we need to get attachment point message before we attach we need to know the socket and let's say for now that we are only using the side socket from all weapons okay so let's test it again let's take uh, let's take the k and see if it works as intended oh yeah it does so now we have this rail that is uh, showing up only when we have an attachment and if we pick up another attachment this one got dropped properly this one got picked up and this one still doesn't work like the render target doesn't work so let's fix it in a second but the attaching works well ok 
Okay, that's interesting. Okay, uh, so let's go here. Activate back renderer. It makes. Let's capture component. Oh, okay. So if we want to use scope, we want to activate front renderer really, I think. Let's see, let's pick up this guy and this scope. Oh, I forgot to rotate it. That might be an issue. Uh, oh, let's go back to this guy. So this I think that's that's the way you should do it. Let's see. Yeah. And forward renderer. Uh, it works on the scopes on the red dot, for example. I could see where did I drop it? It's here. Like this works, but the scopes doesn't. So let's open this guy. In particular, does it run any custom code? It doesn't. Okay. So it means it's in, in the parent attachment. And oh, by the way, let's test this one without this one and see what changes really, because I don't quite follow. Like this works as it did. This doesn't work as it did. Nothing really changed there. Yeah, same here. Okay, uh, no idea what this does, so we're not going to use it if we don't know what it does, but there should be something for scope. So this is for rails, enables lens reflection, disable lens reflection, okay, so on item dropped disable lens reflection and on item picked uh, enable lens reflection okay that's for sure So that maybe helps with something. I don't think so. Okay, so there's something wrong with the render targets. I guess. Forward render, okay, so I got this. I got this. Let's render to texture and they go to those lens refraction capture lens behind capture oh oh okay so it probably requires this one as well now let's Nope. Let's see again. What is wrong with those scopes? Mm. And by the way, maybe let's use the close one, at least for some of the guns. Like this one looks a lot more reasonable when it's attached like this. I mean, you could do this as well and look like Han Solo. But 
why the render targets didn't work? Okay, uh, never mind that. Like I didn't design those attachments, so uh, probably there's some work uh, that you could do to improve it. But yeah, this is basically how you can do attachments. And because the items are persistent, you can pick up other item and your attachments um, persist with it. So yeah. <laughs> And I can now change weapon and I still got this and I can then pick up another weapon and this one shouldn't be able to Oh, okay uh, Shouldn't be able to get picked up which means uh, Uses falls Okay, so here um, Uh, this item component no item in slot uses attachments uh -huh. so if it is found then it is valid automatically and then if it uses attachments uh, true then you go here Okay, so now Glock shouldn't be able to pick up attachments. I get Glock, I get this guy, and I cannot do nothing with them, but once I change to my primary, I can equip this. And I can do stuff. I can reload. But you can see that there's a problem. My attachment is a lot higher right now. If I change it to something that is actually useful, it is a lot higher than where is my actual aim point or a lot lower when is my actual aim point, depending on the weapon. Like here, if I pick up this one, it is a lot higher instead of being lower. So we have to make adjustments based on this. And this is the next episode. So yeah, this is how you handle uh, attachments in weapons.